ตสุนโมทัสสะภะคะวะโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสนะโมทัสสะภะคะวะโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะอาภารุธาเดสังอมัตสุทาวรายโสรวันธาบมุญจันทุสดังเราเริ่มด้วยการเห็นสิ่งที่เราเห็นสิ่งที่เราเห็นสิ่งที่เราเห็นสิ่งที่เราเห็นสิ่งที่เราเห็นสิ่งที่เราเห็นสิ่งที
to awaken attention. So that's an imminent act in the present. It is not a, it's not, I mean, you can grasp the idea of awakened attention, uh, and, and, uh, and repeat that over and over again. But, uh, the, the simple act of, of paying attention is all that's necessary. So when there is this attention, sati, uh, sampachanya, an intuitive awareness, the mind is, the, the consciousness then is, is, uh, is with this present moment. It's this way. And so, beginning to just explore sakayaditi uh, in terms of the perceptions that you regard and then you're attached to as yourself. So that's why I, I keep emphasizing this. Uh, deliberately conceive yourself as a person. I'm this person who's got to practice in order to become enlightened. So just take something like that. I mean, I'm an unenlightened person who has come here to Amravati in order to practice meditation so that I will become enlightened an enlightened person in the future <laughs> or an enlightened non-person in the future <laughs> so you can you know you can um, you can say you can you can have comments about this uh, form perceptions about these perceptions but that's not the point isn't it it's to to uh, like if you deliberately think this, I am unenlightened person, uh, deliberately, you know, say that to yourself. But with the attention, you know, like listening, being able to, to just listen to yourself think. So this, this deliberate thinking allows us to, um, listen to ourselves think. When you're caught in a wandering mind, you, you, you lose yourself. You just, you, you go from one thought to another. And so one thought connects to another thought and you just get carried away. But deliberate thinking isn't like wandering thinking, is it? It's quite intentional, deliberate. You're choosing what you're going to think too. You can choose whatever you want to think. <clears throat> but the, the important thing is not the thought. Not the, even the quality of the thought, or the, if it's a stupid or intelligent or right or wrong thought, it's not really important. It's the attention, the ability to listen to thinking that you're deliberately doing. So when you set yourself up like this, and what happens to me, and I assume that, that this will happen to you also, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm just uh, an exceptional case. <laughs> but the uh, hey, before I start thinking I am an unenlightened person, you know, there's a there's a space, isn't there? There's a, an empty pause before you deliberately think. So notice that 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 it's a that that's not that that is just the way it is. It's not. There's no perception in that space, but there's attention to it, isn't there? There's awareness. There's uh, you're certainly aware of this before I am an unlightened person arises. So just. Now, thinking about this isn't, isn't wandering thinking. It's not, not judging or analyzing, but just noticing. It's like this. So when you deliberately think, then you can, you can also use thought to, to keep, uh, pointing to this, noticing the way it is. And then the, then the pronoun I am an unenlightened person. And so you listen to that, and then it, and, and you realize that that the, those are 
words that go through the consciousness. That you're deliberately, you're creating that. That the, and that you're actually creating yourself in that, in that, uh, with those words. I am an unenlightened person. So that which is aware of your thinking, is that, what is that? Is that a person? Is it, is it a person that that is aware, or is it pure awareness? So this is exploring, you know, kind of investigating. This awareness is that personal? Is it a, or does the person arise in that? So you you by investigating, you're actually getting to notice the way it is. The, the Dhamma, that there's actually no person that's aware, but awareness will include what seems personal. I am an unenlightened person and I need to practice meditation in order to become an enlightened person in the future. And so, you, you, you know, one assumes that that I am this body, this, with this past, this, I have a history. You know, I'm so many years old, was born in such and such a place, and I've done all these things and, and all that, so I have a, uh, you know, a, a history of, to prove that, uh, that I, the, this person exists. Passport, birth certificate, Some people even want me to have a website on the internet. So it's a really <laughs> but the uh, <laughs> but in but really there doesn't seem to be any person in this in the awareness. You know, I find. The more I am aware, the less the, my personal past, and that seems so totally unimportant, insignificant, and of no interest whatsoever. Doesn't mean anything, actually. It's just, you know, a, a few memories and that, that, that you can churn up. But yet, uh, Taking it from the uh, um, personal view, when I get, if I get caught in myself, the, thinking of myself as a real personality, then then suddenly I uh, I find my past, to, you know, as, as something important, you know, an identity. It gives me a sense of I am a person. I have a past. I am somebody. I am, uh, uh, you know, somebody important or somebody. It, that may be not terribly important, but uh, at least I, I feel that I'm connected to something in the past. I have a home. I have a heritage. I have, I and mean, people talk about losing their sense of their identity now because they're, they're refugees or they, they're, you know, they, their parents are dead or they're orphans or they don't, or they're mixed race. Racial, racial mixtures, or they don't have any real clear identity of themselves as, as belonging to to uh, to something in the past, a family, an ethnic background, a group. So the sense of a person personality is uh, depends very much on. You know, like proving that you are, you know, if you've got to be somebody, prove that you are somebody. Uh, your education, your, your class, your race, your, your, your accomplishments or lack of accomplishments. Whether you're an interesting 
or not very interesting person, important or unimportant, very important person, or very unimportant person. <laughs> and then now you can see it in the news, all the, 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 the uh, way people emphasize themselves. This is Pinochet in Chile now. They're, this old guy is, is a, in a 85 years old. They're, they're going to try him for being a war criminal and a, and a, and a murderer. You know, and he, he doesn't have any peace. <laughs> Everywhere when he was here in England, they, when they captured him here in Britain, kept him a year. Uh, they finally, they finally got rid of him, sent him back to Chile, and now they're doing it there. And then because of his personality, is so famous, isn't it? He is, he's got a real past to deal with. And, uh, a lot of, of, uh, identi- identity, identification with is uh, all kinds of things. So, not having any person, person, not being any person. Now, like with meditation, you're, you're not, we're not trying to, to deny personality. It's not a, you know, we're not trying to convince ourselves we, we're non-people. Grasping ideas of I, I have no nationality, I have no sex, I have no class, I have no race. I'm, I'm the the pure Dhamma is my true identity. Is is still another identity, isn't it? No, that's not it. It's not grasping the uh, the concepts of no self. But it's in, in, in realizing, in, in, in noting, in, through awakened attention, the way things really are. So just in this, uh, in this, uh, simple exercise, I am an unenlightened person. You know, so it's quite deliberate. Or you can say, I'm an enlightened person. Whatever, you can choose whatever, you want to be enlightened or unenlightened. Most of us don't dare to go around saying we're enlightened, do we? So it's safer to go around saying I'm an unenlightened person because if somebody says I'm an enlightened person, somebody's going to challenge you and they, you don't look very enlightened to me. <laughs> but anyway, whatever is oh, fair enough. I'm an unenlightened person. Or I'm an enlightened person, or I'm an enlightened non-person, or I'm, un- I'm an unenlightened non-person. <laughs> but the the words aren't really important. But it's the the attention. So I found this very revealing to me. This made it very clear when I did this exercise uh, what awareness is. Sati Sampachanya, uh, mindfulness, awareness, uh, apperception, and that, that, that then the thinking, the, perce- the perceptions arise. No, so, so I'm deliberately thinking. I am an unenlightened person. That for, that arises in this awareness. This awareness isn't a perception, is it? It's a apperception, which means that it includes perception. Perceptions arise and cease. It's not. Personal, it has no, you, you can't say it has a, and it doesn't, it isn't any kind of Ajahn Sumato quality to it, or is a male or female, or Bhikkhu or Siladar, or anything like that. It's not, it has no, no quality of, uh, on the, on the conventional level, on the condition level. So it's like no thing, it's like nothing. This is, 
this awareness, I am an unenlightened person, and then another, there's nothing left a person. So you're exploring these, you're, you're investigating these gaps before I and after I. You say, I. There's the, there's Sati Sampachanya, there's the sound of silence, isn't there? Am. And so I am arise in this, my, in this, in this awareness. This consciousness, this consciousness. So that, as you, as you investigate it, then you, you, you can question, you know, as this is, this is, uh, this, this awareness isn't created, isn't it? It's not, not a creation that I'm, I'm creating the, I am the, I'm a, I am an, I'm creating that. But what, what is more real than, than I am an unenlightened person is this awareness, isn't it? This Sati Sampachanya. That's the, that's the continuous one. That's what, what, what sustains and the, and the sense of yourself as a person can go any which way. And then as you think about yourself and, 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 and of who you are and who you should be and like to be or, don't want to be, or how good or bad, or wonderful or horrible you are. All this this whirls around; it goes all over the place. One moment you can feel I'm really wonderful person, the next moment you can feel I'm absolutely hopeless, horrible person. But the awareness, if you if you take refuge in awareness, then that whatever you're thinking doesn't make much difference because that's your refuge is in the stability of Awareness, rather than in the uh, the gyrations and fluctuations of of the self view of your sakya ditti habit. Now, just notice how you know being a person is really you know it's like like a yo yo. It just goes up and down all the time. You you, you know you, the praise you feel they, you're wonderful. You're happy. You're you're a hopeless case, you're depressed, you're a helpless victim of circumstances. You win the lottery, you're elated, and then, then you, somebody steals all of your money and you're depressed, suicidal. And then, this is because, uh, the personality is, uh, you know, like that. It's very dependent, you know. You can be hurt terribly on a personal level. And then, uh, and then you can be exhilarated. You know, somebody you find out, people find you just the most wonderful, uh, thrilling, exciting personality, and you feel happy. I mean, you see, watching my personality operate, and telling the monk the other day out when I, I used to, when I was in uh, a young monk, and I. I used to pride myself on how well I kept the Vinaya. That I was really, really good with Vinaya and I really understood it and I was very strict and then, then I went on, stay on this island off the coast of Siraj and I got Sichang and, and the monk out there, I stayed with it for a while with this monk on this island and then he told somebody else later that I didn't keep very good Vinaya. I wanted to murder him. <laughs> so even Vinaya, you see, you know, can be, you know, another form of, you know, of, you know, the self-view. How good a monk am I? And then, then somebody says, "Your Rajan Sumedho is really exemplary, top-notch monk. That's wonderful." And he says he's he's a hopeless hopeless monk doesn't keep good being a want to murder like. 
So this is this is just how 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 uh, untrustworthy the self is, isn't it? I mean, we can we can rise to great altruism and then and then sink to the most depraved depth in just uh, a second. So it, it's a totally untrustworthy state to, to put your refuge in being a person of any kind. Even the holding the view of I'm a good monk, isn't it? This pretty dodgy refuge. Because if if that's all you know, then then that can, you know, somebody says you're not a good monk, you're you're angry or you're hurt, you're offended. But the sati sampatanya, in spite of all the 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 fluctuations, uh, is a constant. Mm-hmm. And as we, and this is why we, I say, see it as a refuge, as you be, as you recognize it, realize it, know it, and appreciate it, then it. It is what I call the refuge. It's Buddha Dhamma Sangha. It's Utang Sarnangachami. It's Dhammang Sarnangachami. And it's Sankang Sarnangachami. Uh, because this is, this is, uh, a refuge is, is, uh, isn't dependent on, on praise and blame or success or failure or whatever. In, uh, like in learning to stop the thinking mind, like the, the, the Zen koan, or, or the self-inquiry practice, like who am I, these, these kind of methods that you find in various, uh, like in Zen or in, uh, Advaita Vedanta or whatever, where they have the, these, uh, these kind of these are these are techniques or expedient means to stop the thinking mind. So you begin to to notice the pure state of attention, uh, pure consciousness, with the where you're not caught in thinking and in and in the assumptions of a self. Or there's just pure awareness. So you notice that that's where that's when you hear the 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 nada, sound of silence. This mind is just in that state of attention. There's no, no self. Like this. And then to, to, to learn to relax into that, to trust it. Not try to hold on to it as some kind of now we can't even uh, grasp the idea of that. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to get the sound of silence, and you've got to relax into it and grasp. That. <laughs> uh, so this is this is the dodgy part of any kind of technique or instruction because people it's so easy to grasp the ideas. So this is where, like pawana, pawana, or this. Uh, cultivation, meditation isn't isn't grasping ideas or coming from from any position, but in in this uh, what they call bhati bhata or practice or, or re- recognizing, real awakening through awakened awareness, through a direct knowing. Now, now, some people experience a lot of when when the when the self starts beginning to break up. Sometimes it's very frightening uh, for people because it's like everything you you kind of regarded as real and solid is is kind of falling apart. 
you know, the whole, remember years ago in, uh, in long before I was even a Buddhist, uh, feeling threatened by certain, I- certain radical ideas that tended to, to threaten my, the security of the world that I lived in. You know, so you felt somebody who was challenging or threatening something that you de- depended on for a sense of feeling everything's all right when that, when you thought you really could get very angry and very even violent because, uh, they, they were like threatening your world, my world, my security, my refuge. So you can see why conservative people or that get very threatened by anything like foreigners or or anything radical ideas or anything that comes in and and challenges the status quo or the what you're used to because if if you're if that's your world that you're really depending on to make you feel secure well when that's threatened you just can you go into panic and it's just very that you go into a state of panic and reading about this this earthquake in uh, Gujarat, you know, just the uh, the last week where they in the this is a horrible earthquake. They think maybe a hundred thousand people have been killed, and and one of the stories is it just happened out of not nowhere one morning. You know, these people were like so they're saying some schoolgirls were wearing their school uniforms and marching practice marching on the on the uh, school ground for some kind of uh, parade festivity they were engaging in and and the uh, merchants were putting out their wares and their shops you know arranging things for the day getting ready for just the normal average day and then suddenly within five minutes these girls were all dead they'd just been completely uh, killed through falling masonry and the, the shops and all the, the whole, the whole town of 25,000 was completely demolished within five minutes. Just out of nowhere. Well, think how that would do to your jit if that. <laughs> that would really bite me. To think how, you know, what a, what a dodgy realm we really live in, this planet Earth. You know, when you, when you explore even what, what's really going on in this planet, it looks pretty unsafe. Even though it looks solid, isn't it? In terms of we got looking, at, you know, it's, it's looks pretty, you know, safe and take it for granted. But then, last week in Gujarat, there were people there, <laughs> what seemed, you know, like a, a solid, safe environment suddenly out of nowhere, just an earthquake and the whole thing collapsed on top of them. Well, we recognize even, even without earthquakes how easily just physically, you know, we could have a heart attack or brain hemorrhage or be hit by a car or, or whatever. Spaceship. We're on the flight path from Luton, the plane could crash. So, in terms of of this realm, this uh, you know, in terms of the conditioned realm that we that we perceive and create and hold to, it is very unstable, uncertain, changing, undependable condition in itself. You know, so it's. It's, that's just the way it is. That, and the Buddha pointed to the instability of the condition, of the conditioned phenomena. The impermanent. All conditions are impermanent. So this isn't just a, a kind of philo- philosophy that he was, you know, expecting us to go along with, but when we explore and see the, the nature of the conditioned realm, in, in just the way that we experience it, the, the physical, the emotional, the, the uh, mental. But that which is aware of it, you see, the refuge is, 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 is in 
this awakened awareness rather than in, in trying to find or create a condition that will give us some a, a kind of secure a sense of security we're not trying to fool ourselves or or, or create a false sense of security by by positive thinking or nice thinking or whatever but in but but a, an awakened waking to reality because the unconditioned is is reality so in terms of the unconditioned this this aware awareness awakenedness is the is the gate to that to the unconditioned when we awaken then that the unconditioned the awake the actual awakenedness is is that and then the conditions are whatever they are you know it can be uh, strong or weak or pleasant or painful or whatever So I'm getting back to, I am an unenlightened person who must practice meditation hard. I must really work at it and uh, get rid of my defilements and become an enlightened person sometime in the future. I hope to attain stream entry before I die. But if I don't attain stream entry, I hope I will be born in a better realm. And uh, then we go on like that. Just make an endless, uh, we create more and more complications. And then, then people ask me, can we attain screen entry at this time? <laughs> Are there any arahants? Because, because we, we still think of stream entry and arahantship as a personal quality, don't we? We see it as some kind of like we look at somebody and they say that that monk over there is an arahant. We think we think of the that he that person is an arahant. Well, that person is a stream enterer. That's just the you know the way the the conditioned mind operates. It can't help it. It can't do anything else but that. But so you can't trust it. You can't take your refuge in the in your thoughts or your perception, but in the awareness. No, that that doesn't seem like anything, you know, like nothing. But then it's everything, you know. That that all the problems are resolved there. <laughs> but, <laughs> but if you but but your conditioned mind thinks it's nothing. Doesn't amount to anything. It's not worth anything. You couldn't sell it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is where it's learning to to trust in your ability to to awaken to be that to be awake and and so this is because you know, when you think about it, then you 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 you'll get you'll start doubting it all the time. You know, am I really awake? Am I awake enough? Or am I? Maybe I need to be asleep longer so I can be awake later on. Or maybe maybe uh, I'll if I keep you know practicing with ignorance, I'll get so fed up, I'll I'll give it up and uh, and. Uh, <laughs> But I'm often thinking, how can you, how could ignorance ever, you know, how, if you start with ignorance, how can you ever end up with wisdom? And to me, that just doesn't seem, you know, that doesn't make any sense. You 
you know, like hitting your head on a on a wall, and uh, you know, then after a while you give it up, maybe if you haven't damaged your brain. <laughs> And it does feel good when you stop, doesn't it? <laughs> Feels better anyway. But, but, but instead of looking at it in that way, it, uh, this trust in this, in this, uh, in this simple act of attention. And then, uh, explore. You know, have confidence in your ability to use wisdom. Now, so if you think, you know, probably many of you think, oh, I don't have any wisdom. I'm, uh, you know, I'm nobody. I'm, I haven't had any real insights. I'm, uh, so then you, then you, you've thoroughly convinced yourself that you can't do this. Because, uh, and that's the way it seems on the on the personal level. Maybe you don't feel that the, you have anything to offer on that level. But recognize that's another creation, and that's the same as I am an unlike person, and that's uh, you creating that. You know that whatever you think you are, you know whether it's arrogant, think you're the best, the greatest, or the worst, it's still a creation. You, it's your creation. You create that into the present. Whatever assumptions you have about yourself, no matter how reasonable they might be or based on facts and, and all that kind of thing, it's still a creation of the present. When you really, when you, when you awaken, you create that. In other words, you, 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 by believing it, by thinking that and, and holding to it, then you're continually creating yourself as a person, some kind of personality. So then the, the uh, awakenedness is not a creation. It's just a, the imminent act of attention in the present. And that's why to 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 re, to develop this this I am an enlightened person, this deliberate thinking is just a skillful means, you know, to 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 really notice more carefully, more continuously that what it's like to just be mindful, pure attention, pure awareness, with at the same time that you're creating yourself as a, in whatever way you want to do it as a person. So you get this sense that your self-view is definitely a mental object, isn't it? It, it comes and goes. You can't sustain I am an unenlightened person. How do you sustain that one? You have to think that all the time? <laughs> you know, you'd be it sends you to the mental hospital all the time you're going around I'm an unenlightened person <laughs> to sustain that no you have to it keeps you know it, it has its uh, it, ha, it, it arises and ceases but the awareness sustainable isn't it and that awareness has, is is not created it's not personal but it's real. It's reality. In um, practice, also recognize that the the ending. That when I am an unenlightened person and I've come here to practice in order to become enlightened in the future, so, then there's the ringing silence, the, there's awareness. So, 
that conditions arise and cease always now in the present. You know, the, the, the cessation is now. The, the ending of the condition is now. The end of the world is now. The, the end of self is now. The end of suffering is now. So you 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 can see the arising, you know, where you I am, and then and the ending, and what remains when something has arisen, has begun, and and ended, is the awareness still is is like this. It's pure. It's like never. It's it's uh, it's alive. It's not like in a trance or a dull, it's not dull, it's not stupid. It's bright, it's clear. So, uh, this, the, this is uh, just, uh, encouragement. This is an empowerment, modern jargon. They, <laughs> they, uh, uh, it's uh, like uh, saying, uh, you know, do it, you know, go for it. <laughs> Don't just hang around on the edges thinking I'm an enlightened person and I've got to practice really hard in order to become an enlightened person. And then at the end of March, thinking, well, you know. It, I work hard, and sometimes, and some, uh, then you get into. I need more time, and I need, and then we got to, and then we go into our usual, you know, plans and plots and views and opinions and around what we need to do and meditation and so forth. So. It's, uh, you know, if, if one is, if one starts with ignorance, you end up with, with suffering. Avita Bhazaya Sankhama. In the Paticca Samupada. And, uh, Avita is ignorance, and then, and, uh, and that conditions the Sankharas, and, and that affects everything, you end up with Sokapari Teva Tukatomana Upayasa. Grief, sorrow, despair, and anguish as a result. So this is encouraging you to start not from avicca but from vicha or from awareness, from panya, from wisdom. Be that, be that wisdom itself rather than a person who isn't wise, who's trying to become wise. You see what I mean? As long as you as long as you hold to that view, I don't, I'm not wise yet, but I hope to become wise, then you'll, you'll end up with grief, sorrow, despair, and anguish. So it's, a, it's that direct, it's learning to, to trust in, in being, being the wisdom now, being awake. Even though emotionally you may feel totally, uh, inadequate or Doubtful or uncertain or, uh, frightened or terrified of it. Uh, emotions are like that, but, but, but be the awareness of the emotion too. The emotion is like this. It's a reaction because emotionally we're conditioned for ignorance. I'm emotionally conditioned to be a person. I'm conditioned to be Ajahn Tomato emotionally. And then so emotionally, you know, I've done tomato, you're wonderful. The emotions, you whoop. And then emotionally conditioned, I've done tomato, you're horrible. Horrible monk with terrible venom. So. <laughs> so emotions are like that. Uh, if, if my, if my security depends on being praised and loved and 
and respected and appreciated and being successful and being healthy and everything going nicely and everybody in harmony and and the world around me just being so utterly sensitive to my needs. And then uh, then my emotions are, you know, I feel all right when that's when that's going on, when everything seems all right. And then uh, and then then it goes the other way. The earthquake, the the disrobing, the the blame, a persecution, abuse, criticism, and emotion. Oh, life is horrible. <laughs> I can't stand it anymore. And I can't bear it. I'm so hurt. I'm so wounded by the fact that, that, you know, I've tried so hard and I, nobody appreciates, nobody loves me. So that's the emotional, uh, dependency on, on the person, you know, that's personal conditioning. In the awareness, uh, awareness is, includes those emotions. Those emotions then are, are mental objects rather than, than the subject. Where if you don't know this, then you tend to identify with the emotion, you, and your emotions become yourself. You, know, you become this emotional thing that's terribly upset because the world isn't respecting you enough. But if you, but, but if, if you, if you, Trust in the awareness, then the the self and the the emotions uh, the, about oneself, whatever they might be, uh, can be seen in terms of what they are. Not judge, not not we're not making any problem about them. We're just noting that they're like this, because our refuge is in deathless reality rather than in the transient, changing, unstable condition. So I offer this as a reflection for this evening.